Hello, hello, my name is Brian Stigsma. Welcome to my channel. This is a video um, requested by Elysium735, um, who wanted me to do a tutorial on how to solo over top of Wonderful Slippery Thing by Guthrie Govan. Okay, so here goes nothing. <coughs> so, <coughs> just a few uh, pointers here. Um, the first one, where I would start is getting as familiar as you possibly can with the chord progression, okay? And in this case, the chord progression is B minor 7, D7, G major 7, and then finally an F sharp 7, okay? Now the reason you want to get familiar <coughs> with all of these chords, not just the key of the tune, um, is because Guthrie likes to throw in a lot of chord tones into his solos. Okay, and that's how you get that sort of feel like, that's that more jazzy feel like you're actually following all the chord uh, changes. Um, okay, rather than, you know, the, the sort of stereotypical blues doing the same riff over top of every chord change. <laughs> So, <clears throat> to get that Guthrie feel, you need to start moving out, out of your pentatonic shapes and into some other chord uh, shapes as well. So, and he's a big proponent of um, the caged system. So, if you can figure out, you know, how to play A in a whole bunch of different places, right? Uh, then that'll help you get a better grasp on where you can go uh, in your in your solos and hit. Uh, chord tones. Okay, so that's the first thing. Get used to the chord progression. So the chord progression here is B minor seven. Okay, uh, followed by a D seven, G major seven, and then F sharp seven. So that's a lot of sevens. So now I'm with. That without the sevens in them sounds like this. So you can you just get used to playing those chords. Okay. Um, and what you want to do is you want to try and work within those chord shapes. Okay. Um, so a good exercise for this is to take the bottom three strings and learn the chord progression in as many places as you possibly can just on those bottom three strings. So we'll start here. There's your B minor, there's your B7, it's not technically a minor because you don't have the minor seventh in there. So there's your minor, B minor. D major, that's uh, 11, 10, 10. Okay, then we have G major, which is um, 12, 12, 10, and then F sharp major, which is just one step down. So we have Okay, <clears throat> so now it's useful you can break those notes up. Okay, um, when you get more comfortable with that then you can start adding notes around it. So that type of thing. And you can start to hear that sort of jazz feel come out. Alright, now there's that position. Now we can learn it in another position. Start with the same B minor chord though. Okay. And now we're gonna go to a D chord, which is right here. Okay. And then the next chord, G major, F sharp. It's also a good idea to know where your sevenths are in these chords. So, for example, your seventh in this chord shape is right here. Okay, so that's uh, an A. So the 
this is a B minor 7 shape right here. Okay, now the reason I added this B in here is because without it, it just looks like a D shape. And it sounds like a D shape. Okay. Okay, and then we have D. Now your root note here for your D chord is right there. So if you move that to the minor 7th, then you get your uh, D7 chord. Okay, so. Then here. Here now, you have to be careful, this is a G major 7, so we can't just drop this 7th down, or this root down to the minor 7th, obviously. <coughs> Excuse me. Because that would make it a 7 chord. We needed a major 7 chord. Just like that, which, again, sounds a lot, well, it is pretty much your B minor chord. Okay, but with the 7, with the G over top of it, now you actually hear how it's a G major 7. Okay? Next we have the F sharp major chord. So here's the major. And again, here's our root on the B string. So we're dropping that down two steps to get to the minor seventh. So there's our minor seventh. So keep these sevens in mind because those come in handy when you want to try and get that, um, that bluesy, jazzy feel. Okay. So that's my first tip. Now again, those are just two shapes, or two positions rather. Okay, try and learn them in as many places as you possibly can. That'll open up at least the bottom three strings for you to just sort of noodle around on. Okay, so um, those are the first two points. Uh, learn the chord progression and follow with chord tones. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick example, <coughs> excuse me, um, with how this sounds. Okay, I'll just keep it real simple, okay? I'm just following right along with those chords. All right. Okay. So that's the first little bit there. Um, now the next thing is learning some scales. So <clears throat> some scales that go well over this um, progression are the B Aeolian, B Dorian, B Minor Pentatonic Blues, and we'll just stop there because the last one is kind of special. <clears throat> so B Aeolian is another way of saying B natural minor and if you don't know your B minor scale well I'm going to show it to you so here we go so uh, starting on the 7th uh, fret here and then you can add some notes outside of the 2nd octave here if you want to. Okay, so again. Okay. Uh, next is B Dorian. Okay. Again, at the 7th fret. And if you need me to play these again, obviously you can rewind them. So uh, I'm just going to go over them twice and then move on. So here we go. B Dorian. So B Dorian is different from B <coughs> Aeolian in that it has the uh, major sixth in it and not the minor sixth. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's the major sixth. Okay. 
And next, obviously, B minor pentatonic slash blues. I shouldn't have to go over this, but I will anyways. Okay, it's always a good idea to be able to play these down and up. So I suggest rewinding this video, going back to those scale shapes, um, and learning to play them down and up. Okay, and get really comfortable with them. Next, we have uh, the B harmonic minor. Now, this is kind of a special, this is a, a scale that you want to throw in, in special circumstances, and that special circumstance um, uh, is the last chord before the repeat. So, that's the sh uh, F sharp 7 chord, okay? So, when we go from G major 7, or G major, to uh, F sharp major, or F sharp, Seven. Right there is when you want to throw in some harmonic minor uh, riffs. Now, I know the metal community has sort of monopolized uh, harmonic minor um, and the altered Phrygian scale uh, with riffs, you know, like that type of thing. Um, kind of unfortunate because in jazz and blues it, it comes in really useful and it's very very useful for resolving back to the first position so <clears throat> I'll give you an example uh, I'll show you how this works so the whole time we're just sort of jamming chord tones <laughs> get to F sharp uh, 7, you can throw in your harmonic minor scale, and this is how it goes. First six notes are exactly the same as the natural minor scale, or the Aeolian mode. The seventh is raised, it's a major seventh, okay? And that seventh alone <coughs> creates a lot of tension, okay, and that tension naturally wants to be resolved back to the first position. Okay, which is why it's really useful for the fifth, and I'll explain that a little bit more as well. So now the next octave. Now the sort of brother scale to that, or a mode within the harmonic minor, is the altered Phrygian. And we're going to go all the way up with our second finger to the F sharp on the 14th fret here. Okay? And we're going to do the altered Phrygian uh, mode here. So. Okay, resolving it uh, onto the B. Okay, and again, one more time. So I'll do harmonic minor and then altered Phrygian. You'll see how they sound, uh, well, almost identical. Okay, same feel. Different <coughs> positions of the harmonic minor. So now again, that's really good for the turnaround here because let's take for example, we'll take it from the G major seven here. <clears throat> so we got G major seven. Okay. Now I want you to look at these notes here that are being played by my third finger. So we have D, G, and B. Okay. Okay. And then when we play our F sharp. Okay. sharp or G flat okay B flat now all of those six notes are played in the harmonic harmonic minor 
uh, scale. Which is why it works so well for those two changes, the six and the five. Okay, so I'll give you an example of how this sounds. Okay. There's the harmonic minor right there. Okay, so there you go. There's uh, some ideas on how to um, jam over this progression. Now my battery is about to die, so I have to make these last ones quick. So <clears throat> the last two, number four, speed limit equals note limit. So when you're starting out, don't try and wail around on the fretboard as fast as you possibly can go. What I want you to do is I want you to try and limit yourself to a few notes per chord change and try to make those notes count. Try to make them as tasty as you possibly can. Okay, so even if you're playing two or one or three notes per change, that's fine. Or one, two, or three notes uh, every couple changes, that's great too. Then gradually increase the speed. How many notes you can how, how many notes you can play? The key is to play with melody in mind, not speed in mind. Okay, so melody is the most important thing. And the last one is notice when you're playing um, something catchy or groovy and try to expand upon its contents. So if I'm playing something like this, try and change that, alter it a little bit, just a tiny bit. So. So same basic sort of idea just a little bit different and that that kind of goes hand in hand with the whole question answer thing you can think of your solos as posing a question sorry about that guys uh, yeah my battery died and now my camera doesn't seem to want to focus so the last few minutes of this video is gonna have to be crap so try and think of your uh, solos in kind of these abstract terms so um, if Think of it like posing a question. So I'm going to pose a question musically with a musical motif here. So, so there's a question. How would I answer that? Like that. Maybe. Uh, you may answer it different. How about another one? Here's the question. Okay, and the, qu and the answer. Okay. Um, that was the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's another question. So there was the question and answer. Here's another question and answer. So you can construct your solo uh, based on a whole uh, series of these question and answers. Okay, that's one way to look at it. And also, Think of other sort of um, dualistic sort of ideas, hot and cold, fast and slow, um, rhythmic, uh, you know, uh, kind of more of a sloppy sort of slurry legato sort of thing, so. Okay, so always be thinking when you're soloing, okay? Um, and obviously do what uh, feels right. But All right, so thank you for the question, Elysium. 735 and hopefully there will be more requests later on hope this uh, hope this helps all right guys happy jamming oh and uh, don't forget do some videos of you uh, playing to this chord progression and post them as a video response i'd love to see what you guys do all right Take it easy, guys.